Thank you. Um, Mr. Walsh, we were talking about the three different times that you spoke to police, yep. correct? Yeah. It's fair that from the very beginning, the first time you talked to police, you told police that you and Mrs. Crumbly had had an extramarital affair, correct? Correct. You told police from the very beginning your relationship with Mrs. Crumbly um, involved a sexual relationship, correct? Correct. And so when you're in here testifying, it's fair to say that law enforcement talked to you about the affair right after the shooting. You told them all about it, right? I, I'm sorry. Yes. Judge, I think counsel needs to be specific. She's saying law enforcement is using general terms, and she needs to be specific when <laughs> asking this witness question. Well, there's a lot of different law enforcement, so it probably would be good to be specific. The first detective that you had an interview with, you told him that you and Mrs. Crumbly had had, had a sexual relationship. Yes. Right. Again, identify who she's who was speaking to. Do you, do you recall who the first, who was, who was the first, which officer are you talking about? Which one am I talking about? Yeah, the first, oh. you're, you're asking him sure. about the first one who, inter who interviewed him. I'm assuming you know who that is. There's lots of law enforcement. I know, which is why I did, the, I have the name, but. Okay. <coughs> Do you remember who it was initially, Mr. Marsh? Yeah, I don't know the name. Okay. It appears to be Lieutenant Weir. Does that sound correct? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, you talked to Brian Joseph the first time, correct? I, I don't know. I okay. Don't know. You have okay. Does it sound right if I said you spoke to Brian to Joseph? I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, I'm I'm saying your name. Okay. On twelve ten, you went to the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, the Brandon Township uh, substation, <coughs> correct? Correct. You were interviewed at approximately. 1530 hours, so that would have been, what, uh, 3.30 in the afternoon? Correct. Okay, and on that day, you were, I'm having a difficult time telling which detective it was that did that interview. It was during that interview, though, that you gave them a copy of your Facebook Messenger thread, correct? Correct. You gave it to them on a thumb drive? Uh, yes. And you specifically did turn that uh, drive over to Sergeant Bryan. Do you recall that? I don't know. The yeah. person, okay, if I said the person that you handed the thumb drive over to, was that the same person <coughs> who did the interview with you? Yes, they used the thumb drive on the computer. Okay, I'm just, I'm just checking. If the police report says you gave the thumb drive to Detective Joe Bryan, does that sound right? I had no possession of the thumb drive. We were on a computer at the substation. So he asked you for access to your messenger. Correct. You gave him access. Correct. And Detective Joe Bryan was the one who downloaded the messages. I, I don't know the detective's name. I think Joe Bryan was a different interview. Okay, so you don't know the name, but you know it was a detective at the substation from the Oakland Sheriff's Department. Correct. Okay. And on the report, um, I also see Source Lieutenant Weir. I'm just having a hard time identifying which, which police officer it was. You're sure it was a police officer or a detective that you met with, correct? Yes. And you're aware that that interview was video recorded, correct? At the substation? Yes. I was not aware. Would it, well, and it was the interview that took place that was a little bit less than two hours. Okay. Okay. The day after that interview is just, when just you were... I understand it's cross-examination, but counsel can't just make a statement with the word correct at the end and then the witness clearly not understand and then just move on as if that's the truth. Okay, we yeah, have to yeah, be specific. Give, give him a second to think about it and, and answer the question. Okay, and I'm sorry. I, well... So, I, and I don't remember my last question. I think I was just establishing a time frame. You did the interview on Friday, December 10th, 2021. That is was that the a, first time. Is that true? Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that was one week after the last time you had contact with Jennifer Crumbly. Yes. The first time when you spoke with the officer at the substation, you disclosed to them that you had knowledge about Jennifer Crumbly. 
And you said that you, you told them right away that you had had a sexual relationship with her. Yes. And the fact that you and Jennifer Crumbly had a sexual relationship is certainly something you did not want to be public, correct? Correct. You talked to police again, we talked about in February for an hour. Um, was that also at a substation? Uh, the second interview? Yes. No ma'am, that was uh, uh, at a building over here, part of the county complex. So you met them at the county complex and you had the second interview, which was just under an hour long. Correct. When you had that second interview, now that was in February of 2022, you told them again, you confirmed for them again, as much as you probably didn't want to, I had a sexual relationship with Jennifer Crumbly. Correct. In the third interview, back in December, just a couple months ago, they asked you again for more information and you told them again, you had a sexual relationship with Jennifer Crumbly. Correct. Now, the prosecution is may ask you a lot of questions. So you're still in the form of the question, doesn't matter, but I ask them now, Judge. <coughs> I, I haven't even asked my question. Okay, what's the question? My question is, um, when you talked to law enforcement and you changed... Again, I'm sorry, just spe okay. spe specifics matter, okay? So if counsel is going to request... This kind of um, well, question from the witness, she has to be specific. I can't even get my question out. Okay, well, he, he needs to know because there were, there were three different times, so that, that would help him too. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Over the course of the investigation, you testified earlier that your answers to certain questions have changed. Correct? Yes, I've added. You've right. added. Okay. But one thing you have not changed. It's not the statements about your sexual relationship with Jennifer Crumbly. You've always said you had a sexual relationship. Correct. As police came and talked to you a second and a third time, they wanted more details about where you had sex and other details about those experiences, correct? Correct. Now, when, you, when I was asking you if you felt like you were threatened in any way, that had to do with feeling threatened that your job was at issue or that your benefits could be lost, so correct? I object again for the question. She needs to be specific. She's going to ask something like threats. That needs to be specific. Okay, then I'll go to the third interview. I'm sorry. Yeah, in yeah the, be specific. Okay, I'm going to be very specific. In the third interview, when you talked to them in December, they specifically said to you, talk to you about your job employment as a firefighter, correct? Correct. They specifically talked to you about the details of your benefits, including your pension, correct? Correct. They made you feel like if you didn't give answers, they want to. Actually, in the form of the question, they made you feel. How could he possibly testify to what somebody else's intent was? That would be speculation. speculation. I'll ask how he felt. Okay. When you were in that third <coughs> interview, you were scared at the thought of losing your job or benefits. No, I was not. You do not want to lose your job or benefits. No, I don't. And when you were in that conversation with them, <coughs> it was during that third interview that they asked you the same questions you had been asked many times before, correct? Correct. And they were saying very negative things about Jennifer Crumbly to you during that third interview. Just spe specific. Yes. Objection to the form of the question. Yeah, negative like what? They told you that they had evidence of Jennifer lying about things, correct? Correct. They gave you the impression that you didn't know everything about Jennifer Crumbly. And speculation, Judge, they gave I'm you the impression. Hang on, I'm not done. They gave you the impression. If she wants to cross-examine him on statements, she can. But she can't make a broad statement about what their intent was, that's speculation. Well, their intent is speculation, but if you have specific examples of uh, things that were said uh, potentially by the police uh, to this witness, you can ask the witness that. Okay. Um, specifically, the officer talked to you about ranks within the fire department, correct? Correct. They talked to you about seniorities, correct? Not correct. They talked to you about all the training you had to go through to take each position and the seniority levels at the fire department. Correct. 
You explained to them how you got to each position at the fire department, correct? Correct. The officer explained to you that it's important that all the cards are on the table, correct? Correct. And then the officer begins to talk to you um, and reassure you you're not in any trouble. Is that a true statement? Correct. And they begin to tell you things. That officer tells you he's not trying to be threatening to you, but he wants to put the cards on the table, correct? What page are we talking about? It's at 18 minutes and 57 seconds in the third interview. <coughs> Do you recall that? Yes. And when he told you that the cards should be on the table, you, I'm asking your impression, took that to mean that your job and your benefits could be on the line if you said anything favorable for Jennifer Crumbly. Objection. He just answered that he wasn't threatened. He just was asked that question and said, no, I wasn't threatened. Okay, was there a specific, was there a specific threat made to you? No, ma'am. Was there any kind of veiled threat? Did you take anything as a veiled threat? Um, yes, just that the information that's now out regarding my relationship was going to be out publicly. Okay. Okay, so there were veiled threats made against you. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Uh, I'm just clarifying. That was what does veiled threats well, mean? Well, I asked if there were any. I know, but that's fine. The court's entitled to ask whatever the court okay, likes. Okay, I asked if there were any veiled threats, so that, that, that was his invitation to say, yes, they said that they would call my boss, or they said that they would, you know, make sure everyone in my union knew, uh, whatever it is. Those are all great questions to ask, which I will. All right, all right. Okay. When you were interviewed in the third interview that lasted two hours and 45 minutes, it's fair to say you discussed far more than in the first and second interview with police. Correct. And when you were interviewed the first and second time with police, when it was closer to the shooting, you would agree with me that you were truthful in those interviews. Yes. And during those first and second interviews, you also, in between those two, wrote a statement that you typed out. Yes. Okay, so some of the information that you're saying now is only from, and I'll go through specifically what I mean, um, right, so when you were interviewed in those first and second interviews, you never said that you thought there was something wrong with Ethan or that he was disturbed, correct? Correct. And today when you're on the stand, you're saying you believe he was disturbed or there was something wrong, fair to say? Yes. And in part, the reason you have changed your opinion is from information the police told you when they did those interviews with you, correct? Uh, I that and through the media and everything else, additional information I've gained around the, situ the situation and people. So you got additional information from the police, which you don't you don't know whether it's true or not, correct? Correct. And you would imagine, you would think the police are being truthful with you when they're telling you information. Yes. Okay. And if they're not being truthful with you, um, you're believing what they're saying anyway. Yes. And you would agree with me, because you just said, you also <laughs> saw a lot of media reports about various things in the case. Correct. Now, the media reports in the case have different information than things you initially thought or saw, correct? Correct. So when you've seen the media reports and you have a police officer telling you that the evidence you didn't know, it has made you second guess what you knew back right after the shooting, correct? I didn't make me second guess, it just, um, it, 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 some of it because it time stamps allows me to recall stuff better. Well, we, would you agree with me, and I know you said, you testified you had some memory issues. Judge, I'd like you to witness to answer the question. He wasn't done oh, answering the question. I thought he was, I'm sorry. I interrupted you, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't. You said there were time stamps. Yeah, when it helps it, if someone enlightens me, like when, if we go through messages, then I can actually, I, I, it, I remember things. I can remember something. <laughs> if you request specific information, I can give it. If someone just asks for something, 
I'll put out information not knowing what they're looking for. The more specific something gets, the more accurately I can answer the question or the more appropriately. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, no, I'm sorry if I'm not wording that correctly. No, you're totally fine. I'm going to put your messages up on the screen. Oh. Can you please turn this on? It's on. It's on. <coughs> can you please switch it over? Right. <clears throat> I might have to turn it on. I have to like, get this. Um, is the screen on up there? <clears throat> that when you sent these messages back in November and December of 2021, when these messages were sent, um, at that point you thought differently about the case than you do now. Correct. But the information you had at the time was information that you had personal knowledge about because you had had just talked to Jennifer Crumbly and had just exchanged all these messages, correct? Correct. You would also agree with me that when somebody in the courtroom shows you one message without the context around it, sometimes it's difficult to remember all of what you were talking about, correct? It can be, yes. So, so for example, the prosecution asked you, The prosecution asked you about this message, okay, on page 53. And I'm gonna go up a little bit and then we're gonna go through it to see if, it, if, it, if the answer might be different. Okay. When you testified to pro the prosecutor, you recall testifying that Jennifer Crumbly, you believe, told you to delete all your messages, correct? Um, and I, I'm gonna go down, I'm so sorry. I was sorry. just referring to what I read. Okay, so 53, they just put up this, this text that says, clear your cache, cache, I don't know, how do you say that? Cache. Okay, they didn't show you the messages before it or after it, correct? Correct. Okay, so let's go up a little bit before it, okay? Um, prior to that conversation, so if we just go a little bit up in the messages, okay? Jennifer Crumbly says, and this is specifically on page 53, and I'll leave it still, I'm a, I apologize. Jennifer Crumbly said, can you see if James's account is deactivated? Correct? Correct. Now by that, you knew she was meaning his Facebook account. Correct. So you said, and it's up on the screen, I'll check your next message to her about a minute later was, nope, still up, correct? Correct. Now, you would agree with me that you were responding to the message about is James's account still up? His Facebook account. But the, yes. So while you were having this text conversation, you went in and checked to see if you could see James's Facebook page. Correct. Now, Jennifer says to you, and I'm going to just keep going further down, we just bought new phones with old numbers to take care of this shit, correct? Correct. And at that time, it's when she's trying to delete all social media accounts. You are aware of that, correct? Yes. And Jennifer types to you, and this is the message the prosecution brought in, clear your cash, clear your cache, correct? Correct. And you said, good move, correct? Correct. She says, after clear your, I'm gonna say cachet, because I don't really know how you say it. Okay. She says, clear your cachet, then check, okay? And you wrote, cachet cleared, it's still up, correct? Correct. By clear your cachet, she was saying, close Facebook and restart Objection, it. Judge again, speculation. Well, it does call for speculation. I can ask him what, what he thought it meant. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. When she's trying to find out if his account <coughs> has been effectively deactivated, 
What did you do to see if the account had been deactivated? When, I, when it says I cleared my cash, it means I went to Facebook, cleared the cash, which keeps, um, I, I don't know the computer terminology, but it, it keeps it track stuff and whatever. So that kind of would make it refresh, so I would get a fresh view. So you wanted to refresh it to get a fresh view to a see Facebook. if the open account was then closed. Correct. So this is not about deleting messages. This is about checking the status of a Facebook account. Objection speculation. I'm asking him if he well, perceived it to be. Well, Did you believe this was this message exchange was to find okay. out if if James's Facebook was closed? Yes, that's what it looks like every now. Okay, and then the conversation keeps going. Jennifer Crumbly says he can't get into it and <laughs> we not deactive or hot deactive. Do you see that? Yes. And Jennifer writes WTF. Do you see that? Yes. And then you wrote whatever you did the second attempt to deactivate your account worked. Does, do you remember that? Yes. Okay so looking at this now then Jennifer says, so it's gone. And she says his, to specifically ask you, his Facebook account now is gone, correct? Correct. And you say, no, it's still up. Then you say his page is gone, right? Correct. Okay, so when we look at more context around that message, clear your cache, do you believe that the intent was to have you refresh to figure out if the Facebook account was active and had become deactivated. Yes. Thank you. All right. I am going to go through with you messages that were exchanged between yourself and Jennifer Crumbly back in November and December of last year, okay? okay. They've been admitted and the prosecutor asked you about a few of the messages, okay? I will put the messages up on the screen and if you need more context around what I'm showing you, I need you to tell me, okay? And I'm going to apologize in advance. Some of these are gonna go out of order. I'm gonna go in order of the messages, okay? Okay. So if my questions bounce around, it's because I just prepared them in a few minutes, okay? Okay. All right, so let's go to Number uh, page seven, okay? Okay, and this is okay. So on page number seven, after talking about Jennifer's asking you, and I'm going to have it right on the screen, is my Facebook page still showing? I deactivated, deactivated it, and you said you'll check, right? Yes. Okay, you told Jennifer you'll have plenty of threats, correct? Correct. And you told her at that point, I can still see your page, James's also, right? Correct. Okay, going down further, Okay, so I'm going to go to page 8 of this text thread, and you can tell me if I'm going too fast. Jennifer sent you screenshots, okay, and I see one, two, three screenshots. Those were threatening messages that she had received, correct? It appears that way. I, I can't see well. And you told her right after that, that's, that won't stop, and suggested to her, do not respond, correct? <coughs> Is that Correct. Right? Okay, now there is pages <coughs> uh, eight through, after page eight, okay, there's a number of screenshots, okay, that you begin sending on page 11, okay, and so on page 11, you send one, two, three, three shots, those are threats you found on her Facebook to make her aware of those, correct? Correct. Okay, so then we go on to page 12. There's three more screenshots you sent to Jennifer showing her three more threats. Correct. Then, going down, okay, and I think the jury is getting this, page 13, <coughs> 14, 15, and 16 all contain more individual threats against Jennifer, correct? Correct. 
And it's fair to say at that point, you knew people were threatening her and her husband. Yes. On page 16, you say, I can't... Hold on, objection. If, if you can't even see them on the screen, how is this witness able to say correct to her affirmative question, this is a threat? The witness needs to say whether or not one, he can read it. If he can't read it, does he remember it independently? Because that's important to know. Your Honor, if I knew this was... And even hit. can counsel read it? Okay, it, yeah, ask the question. And yeah, ask him the question. Okay, my question is, those messages that you provided to Jennifer were to show Jennifer specific threats that you could see on her Facebook page, correct? I would say they were that what was going on, um, bad things being said, anything like that, along those lines, that just there were a lot of people saying horrible things. So not, some of them may not be a specific threat, but it's horrible things, correct? Correct. correct. And overall, the things you are sending to Jennifer Crumbly you, in your mind, want her to stay safe, correct? Correct. In the moment when you're sending her these texts, you are worried about her safety. Making her aware of what's going on okay. in the community. And there, Facebook. there was so much bad stuff, so many bad messages and threats and whatever else, that you text, you said to her, so I can't. That's the form of the question, so much bad stuff, threats, whatever else. Yeah, yes. Unless he has personal knowledge, that's in front of him. Well, yes, we just had him testify about the personal knowledge, so. Okay, so you saw ne there's negative things in the press, there's negative texts, there's negative Facebook posts, and you're sending some of them to her. Yes. Okay, and it got to the point where you told Jennifer you couldn't keep up. Yes. There were that many. Yes. And again, on page 17, and I'm, I'm not going to go through each one, but on 17 through 27, okay, so over the next 10 pages of screenshots, you're still sending, I called them bad messages, which is vague. Objection. She can't refer to them as anything. If, if you know, what are they? What are know? these? What are they, if you know? If there's screenshots I took off Facebook, it was things people were saying regarding them. But unless he has specific okay. recollection, Judge, is, he can't testify without personal knowledge. It's, it's a basic rule. Dur during that time, were you sending her screenshots of anything else? No. Thank you. <coughs> now, when you and Jennifer were talking, and if you need more context, let me know. I'm going to ask you about some specific things, but I've got the whole thread up, OK? Jennifer says to you, and I'm on page 30 of the text, her reaction was, Ethan ruined his life, our lives, and multiple others. I don't even know how to absorb this, correct? Correct. That was a response she gave to you about her, that was a response she gave to you about her feelings, as far as you could tell. Yes. Now, going further down on page 31, she said to you, I'm in panic business <coughs> mode and I need, and need legal help stat, correct? Correct. What was your impression, what is your belief panic business mode means? I, I, don't, I don't know. Looking at what I'm just trying to pick out, I don't understand what. She goes on in her it. next text to talk about selling the horse. Okay. And in these texts, she ends up talking to you about what she's doing with her pets. Correct? I, yeah, I don't see it. I see, I can just see with the, the talking to Kara about for the horse. I it's, see this. I, I'm sorry, I don't. No, that's okay. I don't want to cut you off, and I'm sorry I didn't mean to. My question is, as Jennifer is texting you, it's obvious, and tell me if it's not, that she's trying to take care of various business Objection. related to their house and work. Speculation again. If you know, what what is she doing and in, in telling you about this? What I see right here is I is dealing with the horses. That's what I can see with this page up. Okay, we'll get to some of the other things later then. Um, now, when she mentioned getting an attorney 
on page 32, you specifically asked her to defend you two or Ethan too, correct? Correct. And her response to you on page 32 was Ethan. Correct. Further, on page 32, Jennifer wrote to you, then there's the fact that the system failed. They should have never blown it off and made it seem of no concern and gave him the option to go back to class, correct? Correct. That does not say, I chose for him to go back to class. Correct. Jennifer Cumbly says it could have been prevented. Correct. <clears throat> Jennifer texts you or messages you. The whole conversation was very nonchalant. Oh, here's a list of counselors, but we don't see him as a threat. And we just agreed because he, capital letters, has never done anything wrong, correct? Correct. And when this text came in, you believed she was talking about the counseling meeting that you knew she had had at the school. Correct. <clears throat> and her description in this text is that they were nonchalant. Correct. And she... You know Jennifer Crumbly. You've dealt with her before, correct? Correct. In your opinion, knowing Jennifer, did she seem upset with the school? It appears, yes. <clears throat> she also goes on, on page 33, to say, I failed as a parent. I failed miserably, correct? Correct. Knowing Jennifer, did you believe she felt horrible? <clears throat> you wrote back to her in response to that comment, you didn't do this, correct? Correct. And on page 35, I'm scrolling down further, <coughs> she lets you know, I'm scared, correct? Correct. And you say to her, I bet. You literally need to disappear once you are free to do so. Yes? Yes. Why were you suggesting that she needed to disappear? Uh, just because of the public. Everybody knowing everything that's going on with their names and everything, you just can't, you can't be in the public once that your name's out like that. So not being in the public, um, you were suggesting to her you, you need to disappear in terms of not have the public see where you are, things like that, correct? Correct. <laughs> On page 36, Mrs. Crumbly is talking to you a little bit more and mentions to you, my son did this, I still can't even <coughs> figure out where his brain snapped, correct? Correct. That was what she said to you on December 1st, so the day after the shooting, correct? Correct. And your response to her when she says she doesn't know how his brain snapped was, I do not know, right? Right. You have no idea what could have happened. Correct. You have no idea or reason to see personally that something like a shooting was going to happen, right? Correct. So when you were testifying earlier that you had concerns that day and thought a shooting might happen, that's a new opinion you have that's different from this day when you were messaging Jennifer. That was, I, I wasn't ever thinking a shooting was going to take place. I, I was thinking more he would hurt himself. So you never thought a shooting would take place at that time, after that time, or now? Correct. So if you were concerned about anything from any conversations with Jennifer, it was about him hurting himself? Correct. <clears throat> Jennifer goes on, and she's talking to you further about her reaction to everything that happens 
And on page 36, she tells you, I want to die. Is that fair? <coughs> yes. And on 36, you told her, be careful of anything you type on Messenger or text. It will all be subpoenaed and kept track of. The FBI is involved. They can access anything and everything, correct? Correct. And on that day, <laughs> you were informing Jennifer, just know everything you say, law enforcement can get. Correct. And you were sending that because that's what you believed. Correct. And this is an example of everything they could get, correct? Correct. And at, at no time um, did Jennifer say to you, delete certain messages or anything, correct? Correct. And she didn't say to you, oh God, I gotta go delete all these messages, right? Correct. In fact, she just keeps texting you through the next couple days, through Facebook Messenger. Correct. Even after you give her the advice, they're gonna get it all. Yes? Yes. I'm going down to 39. And at 9.25 a.m. on 12.1, Jennifer Crumbly's told you that he is being arraigned and tried as an adult, watching it now. You would agree with me she's talking about her son at that point? Yes. The shooter? Yes. You told her you had just heard it and asked how she was doing. Correct. And her response at 9.26 was, I'm sick. Correct. And then I'm going down to page 40. I'm skipping a couple messages, but if you need me to go back, you can let me know. <coughs> Trying to find a place to stay right now. Jennifer sent that to you at 9.47 in the morning. Yes? Yes. And you would agree with me that when she sent you this text and said trying to find a place to stay right now, you knew she could not go to her home. Correct. And you also would agree with me that this was at a time when there was lots of threats, as we've discussed. Objection. <coughs> Again, specificity, and we've already talked about this. There was negativity. There's lots of negativity, correct? I yes. think that's a determination for the jury to make. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, now, on page 41, you say to Jennifer, I'm glad you're safely out of the area. Jen, I can't even imagine being in your shoes. Why did you say those things? Going back to like all the messages and everything, where something involving her family or son, something <laughs> happened, and I can't. I mean, I can't imagine me if she was like I wrote. I just. I now, going down, she's asking you if you've heard anything, any other rumors, correct? Yes. You're telling her I haven't heard anything. Correct. And then she says to you on twelve one. At 11.10, we heard we may get charged too, correct? Correct. And your response at 11.12 was, that was mentioned on a news station. I don't know how both of you can be charged. I can only assume they will charge James with a handgun not being secured, correct? Correct. Now, at that point, there was a message that was unsent that said, it was. We had the string lock on it, came with the case, correct? Hold on, objection, unsent, it was deleted. Right. Okay, so, so, okay. so the message she sent you that was deleted is the, we had the string lock on it, came with the case. Correct. Okay, so Jennifer's <coughs> representing to you, we had the gun locked. <coughs> That's the message I'm seeing now. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't. That's the message you're seeing now. Correct. And that's the message the prosecution is saying she unsent you. Correct. Objection. It's not the prosecution saying this. Yes, the, the evidence. It's the, the expert who testified about you. what happens to unsent messages. Well, I don't. I just. I don't believe that he would know what the <coughs> expert said. But yes. Mr. Keeston, his questioning said. <coughs> okay. Well, he, his 
my objection was that you just you mischaracterized that. So. Okay. The message about we had the string lock on it. Do you know what a string lock is? There is no string lock, but I know it was being referenced to it. A what? cable lock was being referenced. A cable lock? Correct. So the message to you does not say, oh my God, the gun was unlocked, right? Correct. Even if she unsent the message to you and you never got it, the message says, we had the string lock on yeah. it. Delete it again. It's mischaracterizing the evidence. It's unsent. Well, no, it was, it was sent and deleted. They retrieved it yes, through the distraction. Okay, but I, I guess my point is the message that was retracted does not say we left it unlocked. That's what I'm asking. Edward Ruger. He can testify that what the messages are. I introduced the exhibit. Edward Wigorowski already testified to what this means. So okay. I think that speaks for itself. Okay. Well, I think she switched to a different question. You didn't get a message from her that saying that the gun was unlocked. Correct. On page 44, there is another message that appears to be deleted. Um, deleted or unsent? Which word would you prefer me to use? Deleted? It's not my retracted. word, Judge. I'm asking, asking you just so we can counsel. avoid us. Pick just, a word. I, I don't want to be addressed okay. by counsel. Okay, well, ask the, ask the question. Okay, there's another message that was sent and then deleted. Okay, there's another message that indicates it was unsent on page 44. It would have been a message that he received, right? So it would have been a message he received. Okay, so the message was, everything was secured, not loaded, bullets stored away separately, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Correct? Correct. Jennifer did not send you any messages that says, we were careless with that weapon. Correct. She did not send you any messages like, oh my God, we left it unlocked and left <clears throat> the bullets in it, correct? Correct. Your understanding of what Jennifer says is secured, not loaded, bullets stored away separately, correct? Correct. And Probably. she is saying, OMG, 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 you agree with me, that means, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Jennifer goes on on page 45 and says, there's an unsent message at 1242, okay? And so the next message has the unsent message, and it reads- Judge, I hate to keep doing this, but it's mischaracterizing the evidence. Yeah, it, 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 that it was sent to him and he received it, and that was later deleted. I guess I'm not understanding this on something. Okay, so there's a message Jennifer Crumbly deleted. Um, that it was first sent. That was first sent. And that it was extracted. So it's extracted, it was ultimately deleted. That message says, oh no, I'll never <coughs> be okay. I lost my son and he's a murderer and I'll forever have to live with the guilt of that, correct? Correct. And she says, I'm not even sure life is worth living anymore. Correct? Right. Jennifer Crumbly at this point, from knowing her and receiving these texts, feels, from what you know of her as a person, you would believe she feels really, really, really awful. Speculation. What was that for speculation? I asked him from what he knows of her. It's still speculation. Jennifer also texted you, Message you. The jury can draw conclusions from that. I have nothing left to live for. B was it, and I. I take it to mean he was it. I have nothing to live for. He was it. Does that message make sense to you? Yeah. Yes. What? I, what? What is your understanding or belief about it? Assuming that was he was it, that that's what she was living for, for Ethan. 
On page 48, so I'm going down a little bit further. You gave her a warning at the top of that page about anyone that goes to your house will have their pictures, license plates, and identity plastered all over social media. People have lost their minds and need to rein it in before they get into trouble, correct? Correct. And you also said, he wasn't, I've met him. That message is accurately displayed, correct? Correct. Okay, to give it some context, above that, Jennifer wrote to you, <coughs> Ethan wasn't a bad kid, Brian, on 47, correct? Okay. Yes. And when you say he wasn't, I've met him, that's because you've met Ethan, correct? Correct. I've and you knew about Ethan from talking to Jennifer. Yes. So earlier today when you testified, you've never met Ethan. You actually have met Ethan. Oh, I've met him. I don't remember ever testifying I had not met him. Oh, I apologize. I thought you said you had not met him. Um, I apologize then if I, if I said it wrong. Um, you, can, you continue on. Um, and say, I can't condone or justify what he did, but I do know that he wasn't a bad kid, correct? Correct. So from what you know from Jennifer, prior to any of this, she had never complained to you that he was a bad kid. Correct. She had never complained to you that he had any kind of mental health issues <coughs> or suspected mental health issues. Correct. Jennifer's position on page 49, she says, she, we will never be the same. And then her next text is, it's like mourning the death of my child, correct? Correct. It's fair to say that Mrs. Crumbly expressed sadness in these messages to you about her feelings with her son, correct? Correct. She expressed sadness about what happened to the victims and their families, correct? Correct. And the whole- Well, an objection to the characterization of this evidence, Judge. You can read what's on the text. You can't testify to what <coughs> Jennifer Crumbly was trying to express to him. Just did, the words. Did she ever state that? If, like, did she ever state that in the text? Just what I'm reading here is, I'm. What's here? I'm sorry. I so don't. these texts speak for themselves. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, and I apologize that I have to go through these one by one. I was I didn't have these. You, yeah. You, well, before you, it, I didn't know they were being used. Now that I know they're being used, this, they have important information this jury needs. Okay. Okay. They're paying very close attention. On page forty-nine. <coughs> Jennifer tells you, don't apologize, Ethan's life is over, I need to focus on saving ours. Staying out of jail and not going into a financial hole, correct? Correct. And then she says to you, I really need my giving phone back. Correct. Knowing Jennifer having texted with her many times, she meant fucking phone, correct? Objection again, Judge, can't speculate. Well, he, he doesn't know. I, I don't know. Okay. You respond to her, yes, you, you support her in this, yes, you really need to focus on you, capital letters. Nothing you do and no attorney is keeping him out of multiple life sentences. You need to get an attorney to defend yourself, correct? Correct. Then you say you don't know how or what they'll charge, but they will try. Correct. And she says she's working on, on retaining an attorney. Correct. Now, she mentions to you on the bottom of page 50, they're saying involuntary manslaughter, correct? Correct. This is on December 2nd at 1.30 in the afternoon. Or, you know, I'm sorry, 1.30, 1.30. 
Is that correct? It, yeah, that's, it's morning, isn't it? I believe that's it. Oh, I'm hours. sorry, you're right. So it's at 1.30 in the morning, Jennifer says they're saying involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, the time, time is not correct. I'm sorry, the 1.31 p.m. is at UTC, right? So we're going back five, so it's like nine in the morning. I'm just trying to clarify so I don't lose yeah, where I, I'm at. I'm sorry, I'm trying to put my time on. Yeah. I have to be honest, I don't remember how that okay. goes, the plus or minus, but ultimately, it, this text was sent to you before official charges were announced. It, yeah, it appears so. I don't. So any, so the basis of knowledge that you're relying on is what you're hearing in media and what people are telling you, correct? Correct. correct. It appears on page 51 that Jennifer deleted another message that she sent you and deleted that says, we're on the run again, helicopters, not sure where to, I'll message you, correct? Correct. Now, when Jennifer says to you, we're on the run, she also verbally told you, we're running away from the threats and the, the media. Josh, I don't believe there's any evidence that they had any verbal conversations. Yeah, I didn't hear him testify to that yet. Well, let me, uh, I guess let me back up and ask a different question. Okay. Did Jennifer say anything to you that they were on the run running from police? Objection. No. Say. I mean, let's be specific here. Yeah, did, did, you, did you talk to her on the phone? I, I don't recall. Okay. So, when she says helicopters, do you know what that means? And if you don't, that's okay. Yeah, I, I know what helicopter is. I, I don't, I don't, do I don't you know why say. she typed that to you? No, I, I'm really not understanding what it. <coughs> okay, then that's okay. I really. I that's okay. Thank you. On page 54, Jennifer says to you that she's deleting accounts and deactivating um, accounts. But she talks to you about that again, correct? Yes. Now, on page 55, so going further down, we're on December 2nd, um, later that morning. I'm going in order um, in terms of your testimony. Does that sound fair? Yes. Okay, so right. going down more um, on page 55, we can agree that Jennifer told you she just got into her email and there's so many death threats and hate. I literally just want to die. That's what Jennifer says to you. It says on here at 12 2 21 at 5 23 p.m. UTC plus zero, correct? Correct. This is before the charges against Mrs. Crumbly were announced. I believe so. I'm, I'm really having trouble with the dates. What what day is this compared to shooting? I'm sorry. I'm getting the, a little no, jumbled. No, that's okay. The shooting was on November 30th. 30th? Okay. Okay, and we're talking now it's two about... two days after. We're talking now about December 2nd. <clears throat> okay, okay and then, two days after. Just to make sure you have the context, on December 3rd, that was the day... The press conference was held and Jennifer Crumbly was charged. Okay. Okay, so does that help yes. keep it straight? Okay. Yes. Um, so she tells you that she got in her email. Okay, then the next thing she says on page 56, which is the next page, is that her texts are even worse. Correct? Correct. On 59 through 61, there are a variety of screenshots that we see here. Did you see those as I went through on page 57? Yes, I don't know. What, I can't see what they are, but I see you showing me screenshots. That was going to be my question, and if you don't know, just tell me. Do you have any recollection of what those were? I do not. On page... 59 through 61, you send a variety more, it looks like screenshots. You don't remember what those specifically were, correct? Correct. Any messages that you were forwarding were 
negative towards Mrs. Crumbly. Is that fair? I, I don't know what these are. I can't see them. At that point in time, were you still seeing negativity on social media and in the public? I, I don't recall. I. On page 62, Jennifer says, I need people who know us as parents to be behind us more than ever, correct? Correct. She never said something to you like, I need you to lie for me, right? Correct. She... <clears throat> There's three more screenshots sent. Any idea about those? No idea. Not without seeing them. Okay, then on page 64, Mrs. Crumbly sends you some screenshots. Do you see those? Yes. Now, I, I do believe um, the next text after may refresh your memory on what those screenshots were. Jennifer Crumley wrote, this is what they found a non-threat. When you were testifying earlier, you testified to the prosecution that that was when Mrs. Crumbly sent you copies of those math, uh, the math worksheets. Correct. You began asking questions about the school and said they fucked up badly, correct? Correct. And she says, she tells you there was a paper they showed that had things scratched out? Yes, I see it. Okay, yes. and towards the bottom of the page, Jennifer Crumbly says, and this is on December 3rd at 12.17 UTC plus zero, no, counselor and dean were in the room, they, have us counselor's names to call, but said they didn't see him as a threat and he could stay in school, which he wanted to do. His fucking backpack was with him. Why didn't they search it? That's the text you received from Jennifer Crumbly. Correct. At that point, and at no point, you didn't say anything to Jennifer like, this is your fault, correct? Correct. It was unfathomable that something so awful would happen. Yeah. <coughs> On page 66, Jennifer continues to tell you uh, different things by messages. And she says, no officer was notified and apparently there were threats and no one, not even us, notified, correct? Correct. And you said, I don't understand how the school was no non I'm sorry, so nonchalant about this and prior threats, correct? Correct. You sent that text because your belief was there were prior threats that Mrs. Crumbly had never heard about. I don't know. I, I just know what I'm writing here. I don't I don't recall exactly. Okay, fair enough. If you if you if Mrs. Crumbly and you had ever discussed prior threats she knew about, you would have said something to her like you knew Ethan had made prior threats, correct? Correct. You don't say anything like that to Mrs. Crumbly at this point. Right, I don't. Okay? And then Jennifer says, I don't know, but it failed my son and four other families, correct? Correct. And then she says at the end of that page on 66, yes, but my child is alive and even, and he was responsible for, in capital lives, the loss of lives. I'm sick. Correct? Correct. On page 67, so I'm just going down further, he told you his eyes not right on his mugshot. That's not, in capital letters, my son. Right. 
Is that correct? Correct. You responded, I said the same thing. That does not, in capital letters, look like Ethan. Correct. Why did you say that? I miss <coughs> I'm going to say because it doesn't look like the pictures of Ethan I've seen. Okay. That's all I can say. At that point, were you feeling shocked in any way? I, I was shocked about the whole thing. I, don't, I can't. I, I don't. <clears throat> now, on 68, you end up telling. Jennifer, it's so sad. I'm so sorry and thinking about you nonstop, correct? Correct. It's fair to say that you wrote that because you were so sad, you did feel so sorry, and you were thinking about her um, and, what every, and everyone, everything that was happening everything. nonstop. Yes. <coughs> Jennifer responds about how she's doing when you ask her, are you even sleeping, correct? Correct. And she says no. You say I figured, correct? Correct. Okay, I'm on page 69 now. She says, I haven't slept in three days, and I have been eating the same quesadilla for three days, correct? Correct. You told her you need food and sleep, but I'm sure it will take days before you can do either, correct? Correct. You said that because you could tell the person you knew felt really bad. Jennifer then says, I'll have plenty of time on jail, correct? Correct. You know Jennifer to be a sarcastic person, correct? Correct. You would agree with me, and if you don't, please let us know. That was a sarcastic remark on her part. You can't agree with that, I just speculated. Do you know? I don't know, like reading this. On this date back on <laughs> December 3rd, you wrote, your attorney will prevent that. I'm still very pissed off at the prosecutor and system for charging you two. They are doing it to appease the public. That's called a witch hunt, not justice, correct? Correct. And to that, Jennifer replied, I'd rather die than go to jail, correct? Correct. Not the first time throughout this threat she said she wants to die. As the text <coughs> thread continues, on page 72, I'm going down, but again, if you need me to slow down, let me know. Although we're going slow. Um, she said, you've helped us a ton, just being a friend and not judging has helped. Your remarks within those text messages, I'm sorry, messages, not text, was I'm trying my best that's what real friends do, correct? Correct. At that point in time, on December 3rd, 2021, you would characterize yourself as real friends with Jennifer Crumbly. Correct. And James Crumbly. Correct. Following that, there's discussion about <coughs> horses um, on 72. Is that fair to say? Uh, yes. By send, Sarah sent me pics of the boys. You know she's talking about animals. Correct. On page 73, she indicates to you, yeah, we're painted out to be monsters, and I can't defend myself because we're fearing for, or we're fearing our lives. Correct? Correct. So on December 3rd, the day before, the day charges are announced, Jennifer is saying that she's painted out to be a monster. Correct. You end up responding to her, and I have to ask, is this sometime in the afternoon? Are we asking these messages right here? Yeah, I'm asking, what's your memory of when these messages were? Well, it shows, it shows 
almost 2 p.m., so I'd have to back that up five hours, correct? I'm not, I don't know how to do the UTC. I know it's five <coughs> hours, and I'm not sure how that does that. So does that put that at 9 in the morning? I, okay. I well, don't know. I, it's sometime that day, and obviously the times, we can sort those out later. Okay. They're on the text, right? Yes. On the messages. And you said you have more support than you think, but right now, anyone who publicly defends you and James gets exposed, crucified, and threatened. I've been defending you and explaining to anyone who contacts me privately, correct? Correct. You were defending her knowing that there was a, a lot in the media and things people were saying that are not true about Jennifer Crumley. Objection to the vagueness of the question, Judge. Well, I, I think you kind of put words in, in his mouth. Yeah, too. I guess I'll ask you, why did you say that you felt like anyone who publicly defended her and James was exposed, crucified, and threatened? What did you mean by that? That um, it was such a horrific incident. It, Nobody can possibly stand up for anything that has to do with other than um, the, I mean, the loss of lives and anything. That's the only way you can say anything about that. You can't try doing anything any other way about that. So it's fair to say you certainly didn't want to make public statements that you were friends with Jennifer, correct? Correct. And at that point, Jennifer says, I know, thank you. I don't want anyone in danger, correct? Correct. And further down, I'm on page, let's see here, 74. This is at December 3rd, 2021, at 2.36 p.m., UTC plus zero, so we'll calculate that out later at that time she says not yet waiting on my lawyer correct correct now that was in response to your question have they advised you of all charges have they issued warrants right correct so her response not yet waiting on my lawyer um was i'm sorry that was the response she sent to you and at that point, you wrote to her, follow his or her advice carefully. Do not fuck yourselves. Be careful, Jen, and my thoughts are with you. Why were you telling her not to fuck herself? Just to make sure she followed uh, legal counsel advice. And not from, to do anything else. From all of the messages you, you had with her or any communications, Jennifer Crumbly never said to you, I don't plan to follow my lawyer's advice, correct? Correct. Jennifer Crumbly never said, I'm going to lie about things. Correct. After that, there's some exchanges on page 75, um, 76, about reaching out to her, talking about money with Kira. Do you recall those messages? Yes. So at that point, you were trying to assist her in selling the horses? Correct. And ultimately, this is towards the end of the messages, the end of your communication with Jennifer Crumley, correct? I believe so. Okay. Um, you gave, you, she gave you lawyer's number, and then there's a phone number. If we need to do any type of legal sale of the horses that Kira needs, I can't get into my house to get the papers, correct? Correct. You tell her I'll put it in my phone, meaning you'll put the lawyer's number in your phone. Is that right? Correct. I so at that point, you did save the number for the lawyer in your telephone. Is that a fair statement? I don't know. Okay. You said you were going to do that at 413 and 35 seconds, UTC plus zero at correct. whatever time that is, correct? Correct. You told her, I'll message her as soon as I get home. Do you want to call me? And she says to you, send me your number, correct? Correct. At that point, um, Jennifer did not have the, if you know, and if you don't know, you can let me know, do you know why she was asking you for your phone number? 
I don't. I don't. The last message you got from Jennifer Crumbly was on December 3rd, 2021 at 5.57 and 25 seconds, UTC plus zero. That was the last message you heard from Jennifer Crumbly. Okay. I, Is that correct? I don't know. I can't see what... <clears throat> Yes. Would it be fair to say that the last message you sent to her was this last message we see on the thread, any chance that your neighbor can get the papers for the horses? I can sign them. Kira seems to really want those purchases. Yes. I have to ask you just a couple of quick questions about your relationship with Mrs. Crumbly. When you and Mrs. Crumbly spent time together, most of the time, what what part of the day was it? Uh, morning. Okay. Was it mornings of work days or weekends, if you know? Work days. Okay. And I am sorry to invade private details, but approximately, did you have a usual time that you would see each other? I don't re recall normal time. Okay. During those times, um, you're not aware of where uh, Jennifer Crumbly's son would be? School? I don't. <coughs> so it would be fair to say that times you and Jennifer Crumbly were together were when her son w w would have been school days, correct? Yeah. Correct. In terms of the extent of your relationship, were there many trips or overnights or things like that? No. That, that if it ever did happen, was very minimal, correct? Right. Correct. And at the end of the day, despite the fact that you and Mrs. Crumbly may have had an affair, you never believed that Mrs. Crumbly didn't care about her son, correct? Correct. Her relationship with you was very separate from her relationship with her child. Correct. And the amount of time that she spent with you was very minimal compared to the amount of time you knew she'd be at home and with her son oh, and doing other that's things. That's uh, speculation unless well, he yeah, has yeah, a lot yeah, of details. I, yeah, yeah, yeah <clears throat> that, he didn't say that, so. Okay, I can ask a better question. Throughout the days, while you and Mrs. Crumbly would talk to one another, you would frequently tell each other what you were doing as the day went on, correct? Uh, yeah. I guess overall, during a typical week in 2021, how many times would you say you would see Jennifer Crumbly in person? Once, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so they we're not... In, in 21, I... So we're not talking every day or anything like that, correct? Correct. I have no further questions. Thank you. Why did you stop <coughs> communicating with her? Um, as soon as I saw in the news that um, that the warrants were issued and there was, they were uh, being apprehended, but not. But not turning themselves in? Correct. Okay. So I, I just want to make sure that we're all clear. You're not accusing anyone in the law enforcement of threatening you, are you? No. Okay. And in fact, when you interviewed with investigator Mike Thomas December of 2023, he actually referred to his brother. Would that be right? Correct. And you guys left the interview with exchanging phone numbers, and you actually called him the next Your Honor, day. I would ask the, the leading question to stop. Okay. So what was the tenor of that conversation? Was it, a, was it an interrogation? Was his, was his voice elevated like mine, or was he calm? Uh, it, it went back and forth. It varied. Okay. Just, Did you feel like you were being yelled at? Uh, at uh, some point. So one point he asked you about your pension. I'm going to look at the transcript here. When you when he first introduced himself to you, he was talking about you, how long you've been a firefighter, and mm -hmm. your answer was, uh, here 21 and a half years. He said, okay. And then, and I worked for Independence, and I was on call for seven hours before here. And then Mr. Thomas Honor, said, pensioner, straight for what? She asked specifically if, if he was threatened that his pension would be provoked. I think it's important that the jury understands what that context was. Your Honor, all I'm asking for is that I get a chance for recross because if the prosecutor is going to pick tiny parts of this transcript and not the whole thing, well, that's a problem. You have a Hold problem. on. Yeah. No, I don't have the transcript. She has, okay, first of all, 
the allegation of picking tiny parts, she accused two veteran officers of threatening when this witness said, no, he wasn't threatened. And I think it's important for me to go through that transcript, that interview, to talk about the portion that she brought up. First of all, he can pick whatever questions he wants out of that. He doesn't have to, you know, he can ask, he can ask whatever he wants about that. You don't have a transcript? I don't. This is, she can make her own transcript. I, She's I a don't. retained attorney. It's okay, fine. Wait. Okay, wait. You have, you have, uh... I've seen the audio. I took my own okay. notes from it. Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. Um, you said, seen the interview? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you pensioner is straight for one. You said pension. Um, how much longer you got? Three and a half. You got a cola, cost of living out of it? Your response, yeah. What's your cola? Oh, I don't know what it is now. I think it's, what's your multiplier? 2.8. Was he threatening to take your pension away? No. Okay. Did you ever feel like he was going to have your job taken from you? No. All right. Um, you were asked... You were talked, Mr. Thomas asked you about the importance for the truth. Now, as a veteran firefighter, are you surprised that law enforcement wanted to gather the truth? No. Okay. And in fact, you agreed. Your Honor, I would ask objection to leading questions. <coughs> Judge, you would on redirect, I am entitled to some leeway, especially in light of what counsel asked. Not okay. to leading questions. Okay, let's not ask leading questions. Okay, well, that didn't suggest the answer. I know you can do it, Mr. Keats. All right. Um, Sir, you were interviewed by law enforcement? Yes. Yes? Okay. And in uh, December of 2021 was the first interview? Yes. Okay. So you were asked specifically about certain things that were said in that interview. And you did tell the police in that interview that she said she was worried he might hurt himself or something like that. That was your actually your type statement? Yes. Okay. And you repeated that again in December of 2023? Yes. Okay. And then you testify to that today? Yes. That's never changed. <clears throat> Correct. All right. So the very first interview you had with law enforcement. Your Honor, objection to leading questions. I didn't even ask the question. Well, he, he the asked, last three were leading. He asked him, did you make this statement in your, in your written, did you say this in your written statement? Yes. Did you put this statement, did you testify to this? Yes. So I don't think that was, that was leading. Okay. Um, you told the police in December of 2021 about an extramarital affair. That's leading. What did you tell the police about with your relationship with Jennifer Crumley? Correct. What, what did you tell the police? Extramarital affair. Okay. Did you give all the details? No. Okay. Did you tell the police how many times a week you would meet her? No. Okay. Did you tell the police about trips and specific times during the week? No. Okay. Now, why didn't you give all of those details in December of 2021? Because I don't want those made public. Okay. Are you happy about being here today? No. Nope. Okay. Um, what was your thought in withholding some of that information? That it would protect um, people in my life, other people in my life, my family, my wife. I imagine you've had to have some conversations since that time. Yes. Okay. Did you know how Jennifer Crumbly parented? No. Okay. Was that ever a topic of conversation? No. But you do know that you met her at a Costco parking lot across the street from her employer, is that right? Yes. Okay. And that would happen, as counsel said, during the work days? Correct. And during work hours? Correct. Okay. And you don't recall how often that would happen, but was it a regular thing? Yes. You also told us that Jennifer Crumbly in that Facebook post <laughs> told you she had a string lock. There's, what's, is there such a thing as a string lock? No. Okay. You also told us that she told you that uh, her son's friend committed suicide and that the school didn't send her the original drawing. That's all those, those Facebook posts, yes. is that correct? Okay. Correct. And did you come to learn that those three things were actually not true? Yes. Jennifer ever, ever tell you the details about that meeting with the school? Not that I recall. Did she ever tell you anything about her son in the spring of 2021? No. Did she ever tell you anything specifically about March 9th, 17th, 20th, or 21st of 2021? No. Did she ever tell you 
about anything with her son's life in April of 2021? Mm, no. Did she ever tell you thing, anything about her life in June of 2021? Uh, no. Okay. Did she ever tell you um, that she didn't have to be at a meeting later in the day on November the 30th, 2021? Mm, no. In fact, she was able to leave work to meet you when it pleased her? Yes. Sir, when you were subpoenaed, you were told that we were not going to bring out the extramarital affair. Is that correct? Correct. Your Honor, objection. As far as it goes with legal issues, that is not appropriate questions in front of the jury. <coughs> Why is that not inappropriate? Well, because the prosecution is trying to allege that I'm doing so that I've done something to put this witness in a bad spot when the evidence in this case requires the jury know all the information. I think this question is directing at, directed at the fact that Mr. Malash was probably taken off guard when he testified today. I, isn't that what your question is about? Yes, sir. Yeah. You, you didn't know you were going to ask those things? Nope. Okay. okay. Jennifer wrote to you that she felt like she failed as a parent. That was in the message. In the message, yes. Yeah. But she didn't tell you any of the specificity, any of the details regarding that? No. So she didn't tell you anything about the background of, of her son and her her, uh, her husband. No. And again, I just want to make something crystal clear. In the interviews you had with law enforcement, nobody ever told you that you would be fired. Correct? Correct. No one ever told you that you had the risk of being fired. Correct. What were you told to do when you came to court today? I tell the truth. Okay. And have you told the truth? Yes. Correct. Right. Thank you. If nothing further. Your Honor, may I have two questions? Yes. Okay, Mr. Malash, it's fair to say you testified earlier, you have memory issues. Yes. Okay, describe those memory issues for this jury. Judge, that's been asked and answered. It's beyond the scope of my redirect. And if, unless we're going to go through all the prior okay. consistent statements. I'll withdraw that question. I'll withdraw that question. Earlier when you testified, and this is my last question, you did say you had feelings that there was pressure on you about certain areas of your life being affected by your statements to police. Hold correct? on, Judge. That's mischaracterizing the testimony. He's testified multiple times. He was not threatened. Okay, well, she, well, she didn't ask that. She I has asked, asked that. Well, I did know, ask that. I, you know, I've, got, I've got this, I guess, some, a little bit of this and sister. I don't know if it's testimony or vibe from you. Did you? At, at any point, you said the police didn't threaten you, but um, there were veiled threats. Well, I I asked that. Did you feel like there were any veiled threats? He said yes, but he didn't tell me what those were. So, you know, I did you feel pressure to tell the police some things? And if so, what were those pressures? You said that you, your job they didn't your job wasn't threatened. Yes, your honor. Can I can I specify what what I was trying to do to clarify? Please. I was trying to clarify. I felt. Um, I was guarding myself in my statements and being the investigator was pushing it and inferring that this would all get out, which it has now with okay. what was going on. He didn't threaten my job. He was asking questions that were professionally related because I know he was trying to establish some sort of rapport with me because he worked in law enforcement, was asking about pensions. He did get more aggressive with it and it was threatening as in personal information getting about out about me out in the open to the public and stuff. Okay. I shouldn't say stuff, but I did that help. Okay, do you, either of you have any questions based on that? I do. Okay. Did he ever tell you to say something that wasn't true? No. Okay, you were told to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else? You were asked questions repeatedly. The same question over and over, as we've done in this courtroom today. Correct? Correct. Thank you. All right, I'm going to let you step out and your excuse.